I'm back with another video. We got Sabriel Matias again. Is the well, why Sabriel Matias is boxing most terrifying fighter? <sighs> it's on both screens, man. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Let me know in the comment section who you want to see fight. Me personally, I want to see Matias go against Crawford. I don't want to see any side quests. I want to see main missions. The best of the best. With a record of 20 knockouts, one loss, and one death, yes, you heard that right, in a total of 21 fights, Subriel Matias isn't your typical boxer. He won't in a match with a single decisive punch. No, Matias is the kind of fighter who takes you on a journey deep into the heart of battle. He's the type of boxer who tests his opponent's limits, pushes their boundaries, and challenges every ounce of their strength. It's ironic as you point out they both oh great act coming. You know what is it? What? That shit sounded like a motherfucker popped a fat ass balloon, bro. That don't make no goddamn sense. I get it. The punch with an intent due to where you come from and what you've been through. And all the adversities, even the imposter syndrome that go against you from time to time. So it's like everything you've ever been through. Down to your your whole generation, your whole lineage of what your ancestors went through. From your mother's side and father's side. Passed down through your RNA ribonucleic acid. So I take all that into account, like just the pain your people ever went through and how they perceptionalize you to be like you ain't shit. So you feel that way and you trying to prove like, nah, you can be the best. I get it. I see the, the intent he punched with is set. I understand it. A lot of people don't understand it. And if they do, they can't tap into it. I get it. It's his opponent's limits, pushes their boundaries and challenges every ounce of their strength. Ironic as you point out they both oh great act coming. You know what is it? What? Never mind, it sounds like somebody just bust one of my basketballs. That shit is ridiculous. One more time for the ladies and gentlemen in the back. Boundaries and challenges every ounce. Listen of their to strength. this. It's ironic as you point out they both oh great act right coming. You know what is it? What? Swear to God, I just got PTSD from back then growing up down the way. We used to have a Ferris. They block off the streets and they playing basketballs. They got the courts in the street and we had a bunch of basketballs and we was playing with them in the house and my mom popped it with a Michael Myers knife. It sounded the same way. I just got PTSD. Followed by the straight. And Matias. He's a master of breaking his rivals down mentally, emotionally, and physically. He's relentless. He's ruthless. And he won't stop until he cracks his rivals That's my and emo. sees that blank stare he got that in his opponent's me. eyes while they search deep within to find an answer to the problem he presents. Stopped at the end of a round. Rough this fight. They really thought the pressure. Oh, and on knee. Three. Enough's enough. How I would explain this, it's like, okay, you know, before Stephen Curry, your threes was limited. Like, it can be good, but it's not finna, or if you go and play 2K, you can't create your character to go over a certain level. And it's like, Stephen Curry then broke that mold to, well, like, nope, I can be better than a creator character. So it's like boxing and turned into something else when it comes to Matias. It's... Let's say if this was the top thing, he broke the barrier. So now it can go to wherever the fuck heights. And <laughs> it's like that what Stephen Curry did to basketball. He proved he can make unlimited threes. Like, no, I can do with the fast explanation. I can do it. And he just did that in this region, being boxing. That's crazy, bro. It sounded like they're busting basketballs. <laughs> In the small city of Fajardo, Puerto Rico, on March 31st, 1992. So I don't think I can pick one, though. I like Inoue. I like how he fight, too. I like how Matias fight. I like how Crawford fight as well. Even though their styles is different, though. Like, yeah. That's crazy, bro. Gabriel Matias was born. His journey began at the age of 12, when a schoolyard find led him to lace up his first pair of boxing gloves. The discipline, the focus, the raw energy of the sport, it all resonated with him. He was a natural 
winning 80 of his 100 amateur bouts, with 22 ending in knockouts. But life outside the ring was a battlefield for Matias. His past was marked by trials and tribulations that were anything but ordinary, and he has the scars to prove it. From surviving gunshot wounds in 2012 and 2013, to brushes with the law that led to a 19-month stint in prison, Matias faced challenges that would have broken many. 2015 brought another devastating blow, the death of his beloved brother, Yang Kiel, whom he honors every time he fights with his name on his trunks and on a chain so he can join him in his victories and accomplished dreams his late brother was unable to do. Refusing to let his past define him, Matias turned his pain into power. The physical scars he carried were not just reminders of his past, but reminders of his resilience. He channeled his experiences into fuel, pushing himself harder, training longer, and becoming better each day. On December 19, 2015, Matias stepped into the professional boxing ring for the first time against Juan Rojas, who he defeated by TKO. After that, he went on to get TKO wins over Ramon Melendez and Luis Rodriguez. On December 10, 2016, Matias squared off against Jeffrey Fontanez. Matias, relentless, landed a series of powerful blows. Fontanez tried to retaliate, but Matias's defense was on point. Suddenly, a swift, powerful punch from Matias sends Fontanet. You know what I was talking about earlier? It's like this boxing to regular pedestrians. And it's like him, he fighting with something else, a power that you can't see. That's what I was referring to earlier. It's like a collage together, but you can't see it. Well, I guess Inoue got like something similar, right? But he called it like what the Japanese spirit or something is different. And it's like something you believe in. And therefore, you believe in it, you placebo and hypnotize and delusionalize yourself and manifest and actualize and materialize that for yourself. And it's like you got a power. It's cheating for real. You tell him to turn the cheat codes off or get him out the ring. Because this is crazy. You got pedestrian side quests going against him. It ain't fair to them. They boxing. You took it a level above. It's different. <laughs> this shit crazy. As crashing to the canvas for the first time. He like these. The bout resumes and Matias immediately applies pressure and down he goes again. Bro, somebody check Matias' gloves. Something going on. It sounds like this motherfucker getting beat up with a pillow at a pillow fight, bro. You don't hear that? It just got a loud ass noise to it. Like, what the fuck? with Matias knowing it was only a matter of time, goes after him and sends him down a third time. But it's clear that Fontanez won't be able to continue, and the fight is over. After defeating Joaquin Carnado by TKO, he fought again on June 25th, 2017. Matias fought Abraham Peralta. Pedestrian. In the first half of the first round, Peralta went after Matias, attacking the body and upstairs. After getting a feel of what his opponent had to offer. How, bro, I, I seen a little bit of this clip in the other video, but how did he make it in a ring? Who is these? Am I sleeping on somebody? Then I should have stayed in bed because this looked crazy. How did he, it, bro, it looked like they grabbed somebody off the streets that helped somebody in the apartment building with the groceries he he got that kind of player to be like what the fuck it don't even look right you being in a ring with him this look crazy pedestrian offer matias gestured he was going to slay peralta then proceeded to apply pressure and laid in some up. punches of his own well, i got it from the undertaker In the second round, Matias came out swinging, landing some nasty shots to Peralta's body and hurting him with one that forced Peralta to hold on for dear life. Once the referee broke them apart, Matias went back on the offensive, applying pressure and landing some very good shots. At the end of the second round, Peralta went down and decided he had had enough. I'm gonna knock his ass out the ring. Subriel Matias. 
how did he just fall? Why is not What's up with these guys falling like this? I just reacted to a Crawford video before. Why is they falling on a... I really... No jokes. I don't understand how you... I ain't even seen nothing. He just failed. Once the referee broke them apart, Matias went back on the offensive, applying pressure. Look at... Hold on. Look and landing some very good shots. At the end of the second round, Peralta went down and decided he had had enough. <laughs> look, hold on, look. So Briel Matias continued his... Like, what's, when he swung and hitting, was he already, like, when he bounced off the road, was he damp sleep in the end? He just bounced off and that's why he felt like that? Because that's crazy. He's winning ways by bulldozing his next five opponents. Four by the way of TKO and one with the ref stopping the carnage. With these wins, he was quickly climbing the ranks and his next opponent was a battle-tested veteran in Bradis Prescott, brother of one of Matias' previous victims, Dalias Prescott, who Sabriel took care of in three rounds. On August 18th, 2018, Sabriel Matias faced Bradis Prescott. In the first round, we see both men getting a feel for each other. A few minutes into the round, they started to pick up the pace and land some good shots on each other. Am I lagging? Hold on, hold on one second, one second. All right, hold on, let's see. In the second round, Matias pressed the action and went after Prescott. He started letting his hands go and connected some good shots to the body. Straight rights and uppercuts that seemed to shake up Prescott as well. <laughs> Toward the end of the round, Prescott retaliated and connected some good shots of his own in a phone booth style fight. But you can clearly see that it was Matias landing the more damaging blows. The third round started off with some excellent back and forth action, with both connecting solid shots on each other. Just when Bradis was having his best moment in the fight with a minute remaining in the round and having backed up Matias on the ropes, Sabriel let his hands go and connected some succulent shots to the body that made Prescott backpedal. Taking advantage of the momentum, Matias pounced on him like a tiger and caught him with a beautiful left hook that dropped Prescott. <laughs> Matias, sensing it was only a matter of time, started hunting the Colombian once the bell rang for the fourth round. He started landing some massive shots to the body <laughs> and the only thing Bradis could do was try to take cover from the punishing blows and wince from the pain. Sabriel Matias closed the show with a short uppercut to win the fight via TKO. Hold on, what? A short uppercut to win the fight via TKO. But by the looks of it, Prescott was looking for a way out since he did not have an answer to the Puerto Ricans' pressure nor power. In his next two fights, Sabriel Matias handled business against Fernando Sacedo and Wilberth Lopez, suffering the same fate as all his previous opponents, Annihilation. This set Sabriel Matias up for a phenomenal fight against the Russian fighter Maxim Mad Max Dadashev. This fight was a dream match for fight fans, as both fighters boasted undefeated records and a reputation for hard-hitting knockouts. The stage was set for an unforgettable showdown. Dadashev came into the fight with 13 wins and 11 coming by way of knockout. The stakes were sky high and the fighters primed for battle. Tragically, the fight took a turn that no one could have anticipated. It ended in a way that will forever be a somber reminder of the risks these brave athletes take, leaving an indelible mark on Matias's heart and soul. On July 19th, 2019, Sabriel Matias and Maxim Dadashev entered the ring. The fight started off competitively, with both fighters having their moments and landing effective shots to the head and body. Prashu Prashimia, RIP on Dadashev. That's crazy, bro. 
Must break him. Matias, known for his high-pressure style, went after Dadashev, while Dadashev, a boxer puncher, used his jab and movement to keep Matias off balance and was able to pick his spots to land his punches. In the third round, Matias suffered a cut on his right eye, yet was relentless in his aggression and continued to attack Dadashev with vicious shots to the body. The fifth round was a pivotal moment in the fight. Matias had hurt Dadashev with several left hooks that slowed down his movement. This is where things really started going downhill for Dadashev. In the eighth round, Dadashev was visibly affected by Mateus's relentless assault. By the end of the round, he walked back to his corner very slowly and disoriented, showing signs of fatigue and damage. His corner worked frantically to revive him and provide strategic advice. By the end of the 11th round, this is what his corner and trainer buddy, McGirt, had to say. I'm gonna stop the fight. Max, I'm gonna stop it. Max, you're getting hit too much. You're getting hit too much, Max. Please, Max, please, let me do this, okay? Okay, look at me, please. Please, you're getting hit too much, Max. If I don't, they're gonna do it. You understand me? If I don't, the referee's gonna do it. Please, please, Max. Come on, Max, please. Come on, you, you gotta be honest with me, Max. How hard was it to convince Max that it was time to stop? I couldn't. I couldn't convince him. And I'm saying to myself, is this worth it? God forbid, one punch, as you know, could change a whole guy's life. And I wasn't going to let that happen. So I'd rather them be mad at me for a day or two than to be mad at me for the rest of their life. And that's why you're a Hall of Famer, buddy. Unfortunately, the fight had a tragic ending. Dadashev collapsed after the fight and was rushed to a hospital. He was placed in a medically induced coma and he passed away a few days later. Matias was devastated by the news of Dadashev's death. This is what he had to say. Mira, I think that's always going to be in my mind, since I always have in mind that, well, maybe you would have been today interviewing Dadashev and talking to me. Pero nada, así es la vida y solo Dios sabe el porqué de las cosas. Eh, realmente siempre que entreno pienso en ese incidente. Eh, cada vez que me subo, subo con mi, en mi corazón con la chef. Eh, quiero verla públicamente, tener la oportunidad, verdad, y, y quiero enviar los mensajes a la familia. Eh, realmente yo no, saben, no está en mis manos lo que pasó. Eh, no me vean como un enemigo. Eh, entiendan que pudo haber sido yo el perjudicado y mi familia pues estuviese. A few months later, he was back in the ring, knocking out Jonathan Jose Inez in his native Puerto Rico, before coming back to the big stage in Las Vegas against Petros Ananian. On January 22, 2020, Sabriel Matias and Petros Ananian put on a stellar fight in an all-action brawl. Ananian, in particular, didn't hold back because he didn't want to be the next dead body to be stretchered out of the boxing ring and his effort paid off. Because in the seventh round, he connected four massive right hands in a row, followed by a left hook that caused Matias to stagger into the ropes. The referee ruled it a knockdown by giving Matias a standing eight count. This moment was decisive in giving Ananyan the edge in the judges' scorecards, and he was awarded the winner by unanimous decision. This was not the last time these two would meet. They would face each other again, and when they did, the judges were not needed to decide the outcome. For his next fight, he would face up-and-coming, undefeated prospect Malik Hawkins. Why you have his head down like that? Hawkins. The fight started out with Hawkins using his movement and defense to pick his spots to unleash his punches on Sabriel, while Matias, true to his high-pressure style, was stalking Hawkins from the opening bell. In the second round, Matias upped the ante and applied more pressure on Hawkins, forcing him to backpedal and use the ring as much as possible to keep Sabriel at bay. But Matias was able to close the gap and connect some good punches. This whole fight, there's a left hand that lands because he's been able to get it. But sometimes he's over. In the third round, Hawkins tried to revert the script of the fight and came out as the aggressor and earned his respect. Bouts, Matias 100, and here they are mercerated. So uh, he had lots of issues. That's ironic. But after a few exchanges and having connected some good shots and seeing that they didn't affect Matias in the slightest, he resorted back to using the ring 
to keep this beast off him. By now, Matias had felt Hawkins' power, and he increased the pressure. He walked him down with his guard down, conveying a very loud and clear message to Hawkins that his punches had nothing on him. Before the start of the fifth round, the ring doctor had to come up and check on Malik Hawkins. It was clear that Matias' punches were starting to do damage. Now, Malik had two problems. One, the animal he was sharing the ring with, and two, the watchful eye of the doctor ready to stop the fight should he take more punishment. This made Hawkins come out swinging, but once he felt those sledgehammer fists of Sabriel, he went back to moving and clinching to avoid this onslaught. Hawkins, uh, I mean, the guy, Matias just pressuring. Still, Matias was able to land some solid punches on him. Find the target, holding. <laughs> continues to do so as that did not forget what we mentioned at the top in the sixth Matias pounded on Hawkins and caught him with a rabbit punch that the ref ruled a knockdown his people drew up this fight they really thought the pressure oh and Hawkins goes down to one knee however Hawkins beat the count and Matias went in for the kill but Hawkins was able to survive the round before the seventh could begin the doctor decided to check on Hawkins and decided he had taken too much damage and waved the fight off okay it's over all over. Sorry, Malik. The fight it's has over. been stopped. Sabriel Matias squared off against a very solid up and coming contender, Bathir Zan Jukumbaev, who boasted an undefeated record at the time of 18 wins with 14 by way of knockout at the time. The fight started off with Jukumbaev pressing the action and taking the fight to Matias by connecting some very good shots with bad intentions. There's a right hook. There's a straight. Yeah, I like how dude fight. This dude hit harder, way harder than the last dude. It's like he he punched with intent as well. And he know how to tap into that power. I don't, was he punching from the tippy toe? I think he is. He actually Matias, hit hard. on the other hand, was analyzing his opponent, getting a feel for his power, and making deposits in his go-to investment and attacking Jukumbayev's body. In the second round, Matias came out aggressively and started to press Jukumbayev, only to be met with a series of straight lefts. Some guys cannot. Now under Manny Robles, and Manny Robles. Matias wanted to begin imposing his will, but Jukumbayev wasn't ready to let that happen and continued unleashing that straight left. In the third round, Matias applied his high pressure style, but Jukumbayev refused to give in and stood his ground by pushing Matias back and throwing some good shots to try and keep Matias at bay. But by doing so, it allowed Matias to fight in close quarters and started dishing out some combinations to the head and body that stunned Jukumbayev momentarily toward the end of the round. There's a right to the body, a left hook upstairs. Comes forward, now there's a clash of heads. There's a straight left by Jukumbayev. You hear that? Do sound like you getting slapped in your shit with a bag of hot Cheetos as well, but it's Matias, he's swinging just from the shoulder and they hard as hell. It ain't as hard as dude Haymaker as it shouldn't be, but you you taking more in that than you dishing out being your Haymakers. He just spamming these and they just sound... That's <laughs> and he got an abnormal adrenaline bar and what he went through, what I was talking about earlier in the video. So it's like knowing that you go in the ring, it's nothing you can do to me that even come close to what I've been through or what I got on my mind. So it's like for you to, you're going to have to either Floyd him, the name of the game, boxing, hit and not get hit, just outscore him or catch him with something he don't see. That'll uh, just knock his body down at least because he's too strong wheel. It ain't going to be him. Your body can give out on you though. Some motherfuckers too tough for their own body. But that's crazy, bro. <laughs> In the fourth, Matias began to take control of the fight. He started backing up Jukumbayev with some solid combinations. Even though he tried to answer Matias' attack, Sabriel by now was in bully mode. 
and walking past Jukumbayev's punches like they were nothing. Halfway through the round, Matias landed a solid combo followed by a left hook that dropped Jukumbayev. Wear down. Jukumbayev, there's a left hook, and down goes Jukumbayev! He got back up and toward the end, decided to fight fire with fire, and some beautiful back and forth action ensued. There's a right hook, they have no one loading. There's a straight left, a couple of big straight lefts. Fought his hands coming a little bit lower. Matias is getting hit, oh what a fight! With Jukumbayev suffering a knockdown, he was now at a disadvantage and the pressure was on. He came out swinging for the fences in the first half of the fifth round. There's a straight left by Jukembayev. But Matias weathered the storm and then began to unleash his attack. You could hear the heaviness of his blows by the thudding sound that emanated when he connected to That's the word for body thud. and face. Thudding. Separated by just two years right. now. Matias unloads to go here in the fifth. Rights to the body by Matias. The title eliminator. The sixth round was a very crucial round. Jukumbayev could no longer hold his ground and began using the ring to create some distance and picking his spots to try and land a Hail Mary punch that would at least make Matias back off a bit. But no, Matias went full stalker mode and started walking Jukumbayev down, landing bombs on him. There's a big left hook! There's a big right hand! In the seventh, Jukumbayev came out connecting some good shots. Matias cannot support that left hook against one enough. There's a right hook. But Matias kept on pressing and walking through his punches to connect some nasty shots of his own. Yeah, Matias ahead. Now Matias unloading upon Jukembayev. But with 23 seconds left in the round, Jukembayev connects a big right hook on the money on Matias. Swelling on the face. Oh, there's a and with that, they just went into an all out war. And now, Matias unloads upon Jukembayev. Unbelievable. Tia smiling. A big right hook by Jukembayev. Both men have had each other hurt. Coming off the emotional high and his best moment of the fight, in the eighth, Jukembayev took the fight to Matias, landing some hard shots on him. It is all about with. But Matias took his shots and unfazed went back to stalk Jukembayev, pinning him against the ropes and began to detonate heavy blows on him. Just over the halfway point of the eighth. Which man is going to have if we get to the gap by Evan his tracks? Now it is pure target practice by Matias. Shots and we hear them at a broadcast. While in his corner before the start of the ninth round, they asked Jukumbayev if he wanted to continue, and he said no. The fight was called off, and Sabriel Matias bagged another victory via TKO. For his next fight, Matias would face a familiar foe, the one that took his zero, Petros Ananyan. The fight took place that on January 22nd, 2022, in Atlantic City. The first round didn't present much action. Both fighters were engaged in a feeling out process. In the second round, they continue to feel each other out, but later in the round, Ananyan starts to back Matias up, something we have rarely seen a fighter do against Matias. Come the third round, we got some very good action. Both fighters started to let their hands go and started to land heavily. Cause him not to of Matias as often as But it was Matias that got the better of the exchanges. He landed some hard combinations on Ananyan, then busted him up, and made him walk back to his corner a bit staggered. Matias not letting up. That works in the favor of Matias. And there's that left hook for these shots from Matias. And now Matias trying to answer with the flurry of his own. He eats a left hook. Just an insane combination. In the fourth, we see both men fighting a close inside fight with each landing their own in a hit and get hit style. In the fifth, we see Matias going to work hard by taxing Ananyan's body with some blows going below the belt line, issuing warnings from the ref. Something uncharacteristic was happening by the sixth round. Matias was not the one putting on the heavy pressure, but it was Ananyan backing him up into the ropes at times, and they both fought in the pocket with each landing some solid shots on each other. Against the ropes. And again, a guy like Petros Ananya, pressure, but Matias. At the beginning of the seventh, Matias was deducted a point for a low blow. And Matias, I mean, Petros Ananya, 
That ignited Sabriel's fire and increased his punch output with Ananyan responding to the call. Both men putting in the work and with some beautiful exchanges. He's gonna be in your face, he's gonna... But it's Matias with the more significant blows, landing a left hook that snaps Ananyan's head back. And again, just picking apart Petros Ananyan. There's that big left hook. By now, Matias sees Petros slowing down. So he starts letting his hands go, landing some vicious combinations. Another uppercut, blood pouring all over the face of Ananyan. But Ananyan retaliates and connects some big punches toward the end of the round. The eighth round, we can see Ananyan with noticeable damage, but he ain't quitting. They both engage in a phone booth style fight, hitting each other with all they got, including the kitchen sink. Overhand right, Matias is getting stronger as this fight's going on, and again, and Matias keeping that jab in there into the body. The ninth, what a round. Matias knew he had him on the brink of a knockout, pressed forward and connected massive blows on Ananyan, who only God knows remained standing and trading like a modern day gladiator and land some good punches of his own too. To look like one of those times. Followed by the straight right hand. But this night belonged to Sabriel. With a few seconds before the end of the round, Matias connected a swing it from the shoulders is crazy, but it do save you a, a lot of energy though. Nasty combo before landing a huge left hook that sent Ananyan to the mat. Just looked absolutely tremendous and there's a big left hook in But the warrior that he is, Ananyan got up, visibly beaten to a pulp, walked back to his corner, and this time the doctor walked in for a third time and saved Ananyan from himself and called the fight. Sabril Matias had avenged his loss in a spectacular all-out brawl fashion. On February 25th, 2023, Matias was ready to fight for the IBF Junior Welterweight title. Again, the opportunity arose when the unified junior welterweight champion Josh Taylor refused to make a mandatory title defense against Jeremias Ponce. So Matias was ordered to face Ponce for the title. The intensity of the fight was proof that they were both fighting for something they really wanted. Ponce was aggressive in the first and most of the second round till Matias assimilated his power and style and began to let his hands go. Am I tripping or is this the same guy that fought Javante Davis or do he just look like him? I don't know. Like, is this the same guy? As fighter of the year written off. And a minute left in the second. The third round was intense with the fight in close quarters, with both men landing solid shots, but it was Sabrils that was making an impact. And it made Ponce take notice. In the fourth, Ponce valiantly pressed forward, trying his best to put a dent on the Terminator that is Matias. But Sabril absorbed his best shots and snuck in some solid shots of his own. And let's not forget that Matias is just, you know, show kids a great yes, And we see that by what happened in round one. Oh. In the fifth round, Matias. See, he was supposed to stop right there. Ref, check his gloves. I think he got bricks in those. He was supposed to ask ref what's going on. This is crazy. Felt Ponce was wilting and decided to put an end to it and punished him with some combos that knocked him down. Ponce got back up and once the round was over and when he was in his corner, his trainer decided he had seen enough. Sabril Matias became the IBF's 140 pound champ. Once champ, Matias was ordered to defend his title in a fight against undefeated Shoha Young Ergashev. The fight took place on November 25th, 2023. Ergashev's record at the time was 23 wins, 20 knockouts, and zero losses, meaning he had a very high knockout ratio, just like Matias, and was set on making him another victim, just like his previous opponents. Just take a look at what he had done. Damn. Come fight night, the bell rings, and Ergashev comes out swinging. He landed a left hand with such force that Matias was knocked backward into the ropes. He was held to 38 punches in that round. Ergashev continues his assault, landing back-to-back -back right hooks. A straight left by Ergashev lands flush. Straight, but 
But Matias isn't done yet. He mounted a comeback toward the end of the round, landing a flurry of rights and lefts that kept Ergashev from throwing punches. In a big way. Ergashev, but he's there's an elbow punch. Yeah. Matias comes alive. He stings Ergashev with a jab that connects. He's pushing with the jab. Ergashev tries to tie up Matias, but Matias breaks free, hitting him with multiple right hands while Ergashev holds his left arm. Ergashev fights back, hammering Matias with a right hook. Combo. Left hook. Now the round ends with Matias. Okay, I like that. He got something more to him, too. He ain't just a pedestrian. I can't stand seeing a pedestrian's fight. He got something more to him. You can see the intent behind these punches. You can It's like a three-piece. Ergashev fights back, hammering Matias with a right hook. The round ends with Matias getting the better of a violent, sustained exchange. Matias takes control, blasting Ergashev with back-to-back -back left hooks that forced Ergashev to hold him. Down. A left-right combination by Matias lands flush, leaving Ergashev reeling. Gets hit with a couple of left hands, including an up. And it's over. Just as the sixth round is about to begin, the fight is stopped. Referee Celestino Ruiz officially halts the action. Matias emerges victorious, winning by technical knockout and retaining his title. Ergashev, who seemed to fade during a one-sided fifth round, refused to come out of his corner to start the sixth round after absorbing a barrage of punishment. He looked completely overwhelmed and winded. What? A fight. Sabril so Matias, a force in boxing, is a monster in the ring. His power, volume, punching precision, and iron will make him an absolute terror for any opponent. Matias doesn't just win, he dominates and destroys, leaving his opponents overpowered and defeated. In the boxing world, monsters do exist, and they look like Sabril Matias. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. All right, that's it for this video, man. Let me know who y'all got. Matias versus Crawford. Who winning? I want to see. I don't want to see nothing else. If you knew or oh, it don't matter. I want to see. Pick a side. Who you? Th I don't know. I asked you. I ain't say I'm picking. <laughs> nah, that's crazy. That's it for this video, man. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X. How am I lagging? I don't need, I forget. I'll see you on the next video, man. I'm out.